Hello everybody. Night and day, what does that mean? Where there's night, there is day. Get what I'm saying? So, listen to the B part. The B part to my, in my feelings is the day. We have the A part going down, da, 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 and then night and day. It becomes bright. And it all becomes bright again. Believe me. Let's learn it, okay? See you.
Welcome to this help section of Night and Day. As usual, um, especially with the with the slow tunes, it's best uh, best not so much I can help you with. Uh, the best thing is to learn it from the slow replay that comes afterwards. I would just be in your way. Yet I will give you a couple of hints um, that might help you. And uh, first of all, well, the intro is stolen. It's uh, one of those intros that has become commonplace um, for some tunes. I played this with the trio and quartet and many uh, singers or saxophone players play this intro. I just slowed it down so it's not by me. And the idea is, of course, you're just approaching the, um, the first melody note by going chromatically down. Now, it helps um, now with the voicings to have a look at the chords and um, to see what uh, this, for example, is. Um, we have this D half diminished. The complete shape is this one with the um, diminished basic uh, triad, minor, two minor thirds and the minor seven. So whenever you look for these chords, remember, uh, don't look so much for the single notes I'm playing, but remember this structure here. It's the half diminished. Uh, sometimes I might dissolve it into this. Sometimes I play it together. And sometimes I might even play the second possible voicing here, which is this one here. So you just have to watch out for very little stuff and uh, just remember the chord structure and it helps you read the chord. The same goes um, for the other one that looks a bit weird to you. Maybe it's the, I play the G and I play this. This is a wonderful voicing. Um, it, it includes the flat nine, this one here. Uh, so it's the G7 basically. We have the seven here, we have the major three here and we have the 6 here, which in jazz terms would rather be called 13. The 13 is the 6th over one octave. It's the same note. And um, we have the flat 9 here. You see? So this is a very nice jazzy voicing with the G, flat 9 and 13. So remember this structure and understand it, then if you just see the block of green notes, you remember my words and you understand it and you get it together much easier because I use this many times here. Okay. And uh, same goes for, for the other chords. If you understand that this is the... Just trying to decipher the uh, the green mass um, that is much more work than understanding and this is the F sharp half diminished here we have the F sharp um, with the two minor thirds and the minor seven from F sharp and then it's just going down with the F minor seven E minor seven diminished, E flat diminished. See, have a look at it, have a look at it. And it's much easier, memo uh, memo memorable, memorizable, whatever. Um, if you see it as the E flat diminished and trying to poke at uh, four different notes, what are those four different notes? They are E flat diminished. And then we come to the D minor seven. And then G7 for a change spread over two hands. So again, because they come over and over again, and in the right hand there's very little. It's really just so practice this on its own. And then C major in the basic position. Yeah? So then, um, since there are these, uh, only these da, 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 you see I'm doing something with them. I'm stretching them, holding them back a little, so they, that, that they don't sound like a German robot. I am a German robot, but my whole job here is pretending I am not and make you believe I'm a human being 
which is ridiculous. No human being can make so many tutorials. So, um, so we have these um, like and then you have these you know give it some shape give it some expression instead of like a sewing machine you're not stitching clothes here it's called music so and then we have the uh, the B part and a couple of words on that. Um, we have the A part again. Hold on, hold on. Where's the B part? Where's the P part? The P part. Okay. Then we have the C major. I put a mistake here. A raise. Okay. Yes. That is the B flat seven. Uh, a little bit in disguise, like. Uh, one seven and nine and then we have the sharp eleven that, uh, that I don't explain I don't explain everything why should I why should I give away my last secrets then you just wouldn't come back for more secrets so it's the B7 and then we go to the B part which is just between the A flat seven so and now you have this thing here left hand look at my left hand left hand is this one here might yell and scream and punish your dog because you can't play it but you have a one now you take you can use your pedal there's a pedal you have a car it has a pedal and the car uh, the pedal here has almost the same function <coughs> which means help you drive the car without doing an accident and so you can you use the third finger here and use the second finger here that you can play this easy look I cannot go all the way you can actually let go some piano players they put the fifth finger here and then they say, oh, Christian I cannot do it I cannot do it and I said well <coughs> who put a nail in your fifth finger here it wasn't me it wasn't me they feel they're like uh, tied and handcuffed to this note they are not look Whoop. what by the time I I am here I could even lift a glass of whiskey with the, these fingers, they're idle now. So, and we go back to C. And the same thing. That was bullshit. Uh, hold on, I must check that out. What did I do there? Here I have to assume that you heard of already of triplets, three against two, because that's what's the case here. We have a brief look, but then that's really your skill. You either got it or you haven't. Like dub, 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 dub. Again, the, the advantage here is that you can stretch it. It's not, you don't have to really count it precisely. So it's bop, 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 bop. So the, uh, the, now it's next anchor is the C here. And one more time, then we go on. And now. Simplification for this, let me check. But since I want everybody to play it, uh, I suggest a simplification of these um, fourth triplets against um, the two here. And we do it like this. You got it? So we put the triplets in the right hand into a symmetrical pattern. Again, one. Don't listen to my voice. It's that's uh, it's talking mumbo jumbo, like yeah. One, and two, and three, and four, and 
This way we just solve the triplets problem, okay? One and two and three and four and off we go. One and two and three and four and one. Okay, that's that bit. Um, then we have, we go on. And here we have this nice ornamental little thing. Why am I showing you this? Because we have this right here, what I explained to you in the beginning, the D minor seven, and again, the G seven voicing without the root, but it's still the structure I showed you in the beginning. You see, it's less intimidating than it looks like if you understand the chord. Um, and then we have this thing, it was my idea. Uh, I think that's very nice. I think Christian, mm, well done, Christian, well done. <coughs> this um, thing. I just go parallel with these, uh, with a tiger claw. This time it's a tiger claw. We need all, f all, uh, all four fingers. We need all four fingers of your hand. Okay, use all four fingers, ignore the fourth one, and we use it again. So you can uh, use what you just practiced. Uh, Again, this again look left hand here you don't have to learn it again and here finger setting and again see this way it becomes all more comprehensible to you then we go down and play this pattern mm, contrast in sound it's just the arpeggiating chords. This is uh, the chord notes from F sharp half diminished. These are the chord notes from F minor 7. So again the chords help you. If you for a start start to learn them or at least try to understand. Then we have this. Oh now what we have. We have the E flat diminished. Now one two three four you see here right? playing the E flat diminished, the E flat diminished is this chord here, and I play a part of that here, and here, it's just an inversion. And now, what comes now? Oh, holy moly. Okay, let's have a look. It's, before we played this chord, right? Okay, now I play this chord again, just again, with the same note, just dissolving it, yeah. Great. So here, now, da, 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 under setting, and what do I do? I just take the same note again. It looks so divine, and it sounds divine, but it's really a peasant's trick. Uh, up, and then under setting, using the same thing, same thing, whoop, here, and here they are. Here they are again. And you guessed it already. What's the last thing? It's just the same. It's just the same. Well, I am a magician, but certainly not on the piano. So, here we have this. Dun, 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 dun. Then, same thing repeating and same thing repeating. I'm more than anything else a showmaster who's trying to bluff his way through to keep a big piano channel open. Okay. And then we have the thing from the beginning. So, and then it sounds great if you we speed it up. Oh. And here, here I use a different voicing in the left hand. You see, this is a, I use it, this is normal D, um, D minor half diminished. And there's another voicing, just to give it a little uh, change, is if you move this note here. We have a, a clash again, but it's a very desirable clash of the minor, of the flat 5 with the 4. So this is D minor 7, this is also D minor 7, and here I play this one. It's all for the sake of the music, and then we have... 
this you can all see uh, easy peasy uh, in the slow part. We have to go on. Now we have. And again. It's again one of those uh, arpeggios. C major chord. Again, I just follow the chord. That's where I'm landing. It's again C major with the 9 instead of the root. So C major and then the 9. And then ooh, C major. It's the 5, the major 7 and the 3rd. You see it's all basic cooking. Then we have again this lovely um, little ornamentation. Again, you learn these chords in the beginning. If you follow my advice, you're much faster. F minor 7. <sighs> Falling asleep. E minor 7. <sighs> oh. uh, I guess now is the. Oh, I knew it. It's the E diminished coming. How original, Christian. And there we have this. You see, I have this thing. Fifth in the uh, in the bass is a different sound now. And I want you to like open up a little bit. One, and I have very few. What is this? Again, if you follow my cocktail piano voicings, you know that this is the three, five, seven, nine, nine voicing of the E major. Yeah. E flat major, sorry, three, five, seven, nine. It's all in my lessons. Subscribe, subscribe. You're wasting your time. Otherwise, and here, and then we have here. Are you new to my channel? This is an upward slide, two fingers to the E flat with the second finger just dipping the D. We want this clash and then clashing to a C major. And what the heck? Yes, yes, yes. You learned my voicings? Three, five, seven, nine. So we have E flat major. Three, five, seven, nine. C, three, five, seven, nine. It's so easy. Now, again. And C, guess what? Three, five, seven, nine. Scale, uh, these chords again. F half diminished. F minor seven. Let me guess. Is the next one E minor seven? Oh yes, it is. How could I tell? I must be. What's this guy again? Anyway, I'm a prophet. Uh, and let me get now. This is now D minor seven. <coughs> uh, hold on. Same thing. Same thing. We learned. You see, uh, and then comes this ending, which is, of course, it's not mine. I must say, I've stolen it. I'm a little thief, and it's a beautiful ending. We uh, are not arriving at the C major quite directly. We're going a, a detour, and it's a beautiful detour in this case. Oh, everybody was expecting. That was what everybody was expecting. Not so here. Like. And then. Ah, still not arriving. Hot. G flat 7. Oh, listen to this. And he dares the composer, or the inventor of this, creator of this little detour. Now he's going from the... We still have the C major in our ear. We know the pieces in C major. We know we must go to C major. It's, it's lurking in the air. We're coming from A flat. We all know where we're going. We all know it. Well, we are going to die, but uh, uh, 
depends when. But so in this uh, uh, case, the dying is the C major. It's the dying down of the song. And we all know it's going to die on C major. But. And then he's going from G flat 7 to. Beautiful detour. It's probably one of the um, um, most beautiful detour tours in, in jazz I know. I don't know it a lot, but some, a little bit. So, and I really love this going from A major, D flat, uh, A flat major to D flat major. And the, the trick is that the top note is always staying the C. That is what connects the chords, you know. They're strange chords, but we have this top note going through all chords we have it's going to be our last note but it starts here A now it's here now it's on D flat major same here now it's on G flat uh, 7 it's still here and of course I said don't always stop on the root boring but we stop on the major 7 so I hope I could explain you a couple of things and uh, uh, save you some time going now through the slow replay. Uh, do it in, in bites of maybe four bars and uh, I wish you good luck with it, enjoy it and have a nice day, stay healthy and take care. Bye bye from Berlin.
I hope you liked my video and that you learned something. Now you can subscribe. Just press this subscribe button or click on another of my videos on this side. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.